Hello everyone, I'm Ming Yuan Xia from McGill University. Today I'm talking about our work, a tale of two erasure codes in the Hadoop distributed file system. This is a joint work with Mohit Saxena, Mario Blum, and David Peace from IBM Research Armadan. Nowadays, the global data is growing enormously, and we have seen a data growth rate of 5x to 6x over the past five years. And this trend will con likely to continue into 2020, where we are expected to reach 40 zettabytes globally. So if we look at the big data stack, uh, back in 10 years ago, we have uh, when the Google file system is first introduced, the three-way replication is the standard method to provide data re uh, reliability. However, this scheme ends up with a storage overhead of 3x. Nowadays, because of the uh, storage overhead pressure, most of these systems has transitioned to original coding to provide a low storage overhead. And uh, we have uh, seen a lot, a lot of work going on and it adopts new codes and new coding techniques to bring storage overhead down to, to between 1.4x and 1.5x. This savings for sure saves a lot of millions of dollars for storing data in capital costs. So before I uh, go into the details, I will first uh, give some background of erasure coding. So. <coughs> Um, originally, with three-way replication, every, every data block will have three copies in the system. Now, with erasure coding, each data block will only have one copy in the system. And uh, I will give example of uh, Reed Solomon 1410 code developed at Facebook. So here, um, this scheme will group every 10 data blocks into one stripe, and then compute four parity blocks from these 10, stri uh, 10 blocks. And the storage overhead here is um, defined as the total storage, uh, the ratio of total storage to data storage is 14 over 10 equals 1.4x. When a failure happens, <coughs> the this scheme needs to read, um, fetch 10 blocks over the network to one place from the remaining 13 blocks to recover the lost block. And uh, this had bring up two problems. One is the latency problem, commonly known as the degraded read problem. And also, there is a throughput problem caused by this. It's known as data reconstruction. I will elaborate these two problems in the next couple of slides. First, let's take a look at the degree read. Uh, degree reads happens when a client reads a block. So you, uh, when you read a block, you, you have a chance to get a read exception because of software errors. For example, the, um, the, the, the data node you are touching is being updated or the disk you are getting to is having too much traffic and cannot service new read requests. Also, some hardware failures and errors will also cause good reads. When you get a degree read, uh, when you get a read exception, you will need to fetch uh, other data blocks from other data nodes across the network to recover that uh, unavailable block. This for sure incurs extra latency for this read, like, uh, for this read request. The second problem is known as the data reconstruction problem. It's commonly caused by disk or node failures. And in some cases, when you're decommissioning nodes, this will also happen. In, um, when we have a failure uh, in disk or in node, uh, the system will detect this failure and launch a MapReduce reconstruction job. The, the purpose for this job is to read extensively uh, in, from the system and fetch the blocks and recover all the lost blocks on that disk or node. According to the current data, um, a, production, a typical production cluster with, will, in Facebook contains a few thousand servers, and the new data coming in is at a rate of 500 terabytes to 900 terabytes per day. And the, we will expect a failure of over 100,000 of blocks every day. And this translates to a reconstruction traffic of 180 terabytes per day. This traffic will impact the foreground tasks in two ways. First, it will uh, share the network bandwidth with the foreground tasks. Second, when a disk or a node is being uh, reconstructed, um, all the reads to the blocks on that disk or node will also be degraded. So we look at all the existing uh, production system. Most of them are use a single erasure code. For example, the Facebook and the Google are all using Reed Solomon code, and uh, you will see uh, uh, here, this graph, the x-axis is the storage overhead, the y-axis is the recovery cost, which is the number of uh, 
blocks need to be transferred over the network for, for recovering one block. And here you'll see the two erasure codes used in existing system will have inherent trade-off between these two dimensions. So in this work, we want to develop a de technique which can achieve lower recovery cost as well as uh, using um, less storage space. So we start by first taking a, take a look at the workload data access skew. We, are, uh, we have five workloads, four from, um, four from cloud uh, customers and one Facebook workload. And uh, the, the X axis here is the file ranked by decreasing access frequency. The Y axis is the file access frequency. As we can see, uh, both in log scale. As we can see here, um, only 10% of the data gets the majority of uh, the accesses. And then the majority of the data is code, and 90% of them are just accessed for a few uh, times. Note here, it's all log skewed. So motivated by this uh, access skew, in this week, we, uh, in this work, we propose to use two erasure codes instead of one. We use a fast erasure code to uh, code uh, hot files, which provides uh, low recovery cost. We also use the compact code to, uh, to code the majority of uh, the code data, which gives us overall uh, low uh, storage overhead. With the observed access skew, we expect that uh, we can get both of the best, uh, we can get the best of the both codes. We implant this idea and design our HackFS which is the Hadoop adaptively coded file system. For comparison, originally the, the, the HDFS will uh, triplicate all new files. When new files become write code, it will use the erasure code to code it. In most, in most cases, it's a read Solomon code. In our HackFS, we keep the three-way replication for new files the same. When a file becomes write code, we subclassify it into read code and read hot files. And using and use the compact and the fast code accordingly. We uh, here are the popular erasure code families that have been either adopted in uh, production system or actively being researched. In this work, we apply our adaptive coding to the product codes and LRCs. Uh, both are having a very low recovery cost. I will be mainly using the product code, for example. So here I show you a fast product code, which we call a two by five product code. Uh, the, this code will group every 10 blocks into a two by five matrix and uh, compute uh, uh, horizontal and vertical parities from these data blocks. Here, the horizontal parities, for example, P1, is computed by taking the ZOR of the data blocks on the same row. So P1 is the ZOR of D1 to D5. Similarly, uh, the vertical um, parity is computed by taking the ZOR of the data block on the column. So P3 here is the ZOR of D1 and D6. Altogether, we add eight parity blocks to every 10 data blocks. And this comes at a storage overhead of 1.8x. After encoding all of those data, uh, all of these blocks, data blocks and parity blocks are distributed to different nodes to provide full tolerance. This code, when we have a single failure, we have two choices to recover it. We either take the column or take the row. And uh, we will choose the column here because it's, uh, we only need to take, uh, transfer two data blocks to recover that. On the contrary, we also have a compact code which uses larger matrix to get lower storage overhead at the cost of uh, higher uh, recovery cost. Here, we use the six by five product code which can effectively reduce the storage overhead to 1.4x uh, at a uh, recovery cost of five. We put these two codes in the trade-off space we seen before we, uh, in, to compare uh, these two codes with uh, existing single-coded systems. So here we see the compact code on the left and the fast code on the right uh, button. So with a specific workload, HackFS can achieve a point within the rectangle bounded by the two chosen code. When the storage, uh, when the code data accounts for the majority, uh, the storage overhead of HackFS will approach that of the compact code on the left side. 
when hot data is accessed more frequently, uh, the overall, the hack efforts will achieve a recovery cost close to the fast code. So the optimal po uh, performance point is on the left bottom side of this rectangle, which provides the lowest possible recovery cost and the storage overhead giving the two, two uh, codes. And the ac data access skew observed from real workloads will help us to converge to this point. Furthermore, we also set a bound, a storage bound, to make sure that the system always stay within a particular storage overhead. For example, we can choose 1.5x for this case, which is used in the Google Colossus production system. And to bound this storage, we need two extra um, coding methods to provide it for support. When the system is uh, over the bound, we, use a, we develop a new uh, coding method called upcoding to bring some files that has been previously coded with fast code to compact code. Um, in this sense, the HackFS first lists all the files that are coded with fast code, and then the system will upcode these, fi uh, these files to compact code in LRU orders. We name this operation as upcoding because it's uh, getting the recovery cost up. Uh, similarly, but le less likely, we also have uh, a downcoding operation. This happens when the system is way below the bound. We will convert some compact code to fast code. So here I will show example, the upcoding example for product codes. The goal here is to merge three 2x5 fast um, product code to a single 6x5 compact code. And uh, as we can see that the data blocks on the row stay the same. So the horizontal parities do not require recomputation. We only need to update uh, vertical parities. And as noticed, uh, the new vertical parities can be effectively computed by taking the ZOR of the old uh, vertical parities at the same position. So we, uh, when, computing the, when updating the parities, we do not need to read data blocks. Uh, overall, all the parity updates can be done in parallel and in a distributed manner. We have uh, implemented HackFS with these two codes, the product code and the local reconstruction code. We also develop efficient up and down coding operations for the other three popular codes as well. For evaluation, we implement HackFS on top of Facebook's uh, HDFS. It has 3K lines of code spanning across three new modules. One is to moderate the file system state, one applies the adaptive coding state machine, and the one providing the coding support for product code and the LRC. We evaluate our system with five workloads, four from Cloudera uh, customers and one from Facebook. We set up a cluster of 11 nodes to, for our experiments. So here we are particularly interested in three metrics. The first is the degree read latency. This comes when a foreground task read a block that is not available, and it, the recover the recovery time will factor into the read request. And uh, this is mostly caused by the software issues. For this experiment, uh, we, uh, simul uh, we um, inject faults by uh, deleting a specific block in the system and then read this block to trigger this degree read. And uh, the second metric we are interested in is the reconstruction time. This happens when the uh, hardware failure happens and uh, the system will schedule MapReduce job to recover the lost data. Uh, for this experiment, we inject faults by taking off the entire disk and inform the system of this failure. Uh, the third dimension is uh, the storage overhead. For sure, we want to provide bonded storage overhead to the, to the uh, system administrator. So first, we will take a look at the degree read latency. Here, the x axis is the storage overhead. The y axis is the degree read latency measured in seconds. Our, our cluster during this experiment is heavily utilized. There are several MapReduce jobs running in foreground in addition to this uh, recovery operation. And we first measure the numbers for three production systems. All of them are single coded system. Facebook and uh, Google using Reed Solomons, and uh, Windows ASO storage is using local reconstruction code. Then we put uh, the HackFS uh, implementation with uh, product codes. The compact code has a similar 
uh, storage overhead of the Facebook implementation. And the fast uh, code span to the right bottom side of this rectangle. We use the uh, 1.5x as the storage bound, which is also the storage overhead provided by the Google Colossus. So here we show the two HackFS implementation. The blue uh, box is the HackFS implementation with product codes with a bound of 1.5x, which is the Google Colossus storage overhead. The red box is the HackFS implementation with local reconstruction code bounded by Facebook's production system. We see that, that although we have enforced a tight storage bound, we always have a recovery cost lower than the, the compact code we chose. And the CC1 is getting the best of both codes. It's getting low recovery costs as the uh, fast code and also the low storage overhead of the compact code. This is because its majority of its access go to the hot data and the majority of its data is, is very cold. So second, next we take a look at the reconstruction time. And uh, here the, the y-axis changes to reconstruction time of an uh, hour. The system will code most data with compact code. That's why we will have a low storage overhead as observed. However, we, when we lose data, we also lose majority of the files coded with a compact code. And the compact code has a higher recovery cost. So as a result, uh, we expect that when the storage overhead is low, the recovery cost, uh, the reconstruction time also approach that of the compact code. Here, the best case is the CC3 and CC4 because it has uh, fewer code data compared to other workloads. On the contrary, the, the CC1, which is uh, very close to the compact code performance, has the majority of data in, uh, in the code state. Here, we show the system level comparison of our two HackFS implementation compared with three existing systems. And uh, this shows the percentage improvement average across all five workloads. We implement HackFS with product codes to improve existing Ree Solomon based systems. As we can see in the upper table, the, uh, our HackFS PC can effectively reduce, to rec uh, reduce the cost for two recovery scenarios without incurring much extra storage overhead. And we also implement HackFS with L local reconstruction code to improve existing LRC storage-based uh, systems, which is the Windows Azure storage. As we can see in the lower table, the uh, degree to read latency is also benefit a lot. Uh, and we are, we, the HackFS LRC does not uh, just uh, lose 5% of the storage overhead for achieving the 20% improvement in degree to read latency. Overall, HackFS is a general methodology which can better exploit the strengths of each individual code family. And the product code here is better for recovery. LRC is better for storage overhead. However, if you uh, compare a HackFS PC, which is optimized for recovery, with the LRC, which is uh, optimized for storage overhead, you may not have a fair comparison. So that's why we lose 10% uh, storage overhead here. In conclusion, most of the existing system we know are using single uh, erasure code. And we provide a general methodology which use two erasure codes to effectively tra trade off in our re adaptive coding rectangle. We have implemented HackFS with product codes and a local reconstruction code. We develop uh, efficient up down coding support for these two codes. And, um, we, uh, with our experiments, we show that we can, uh, the HackFS can explore its workload characteristic to better review the strengths of each individual code families. Here I conclude my talk, and uh, thank you for listening. We also have a poster in the post section. If you have any questions, you can come by and uh, we can chat. And uh, I will be happy to take questions. So uh, Brent Welch at Google. So I think you're trading off reliability for recovery time. So in the product code, 
uh, that you had pictured, for example, it's not three fault tolerant, but you're comparing it against uh, 6.3 encoding, which would be three fault tolerant, or a, 14, or a 1410 encoding, which is four fault tolerant. Um, so are you sure in your, are you in your real life work, are you actually comparing codes that have the same redundancy? Uh, the 2x5 and a 6x5 protocol are both three tolerant. And uh, they are the same as the LRC chosen in Windows Azure and uh, the 96 uh, used in Google Colossus. Okay, oh no, that's right. Yeah, so the bottom, that's what the bottom right corner is for. Okay. The, yeah, okay. That, the, the global the, parity. The, the global parity. Okay. All right, thanks. Uh, thanks. So, well, I'll let so my question, uh, Konstantin Shvachko, one disk. Uh, my question about uh, whether we lose redundancy uh, using ratio codes. So in HDFS, we <coughs> have a block placement policy, right? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, that takes into account uh, racks. And in this case, if uh, you choose 10 blocks from the same data node, then you lose one data node, you basically lost uh, all the data uh, that corresponded to those blocks. I mean, is there any thinking around that? Um, in the three-way replication, the replicas are supposed to stay on different data nodes. It's the same as uh, for erasure codes. So when you're after encoding, your data blocks and parity blocks in the same stripe will be striped across different data nodes. So you won't lose a single machine and then lose two blocks in the same stripe. Thanks. Uh, hi, I'm Rashmi from Berkeley. Uh, this question is related to the first question uh, about reliability. So you said that it is uh, three for three failure tolerant, right? Mm. But it is uh, three failure out of the, you have six by five. So when you change the matrix uh, sizes, so you are three fault tolerance, but the it is three out of 30, right? So the reliability is decreasing as you, uh, may, you, you go from uh, non-compact to compact. Uh, Yes, I agree. Um, in our paper, we have uh, the MTTF measurement for these two codes. And we have shown that it's uh, no worse than the three-way replication for sure. It's uh, comparable to LRCs and uh, Re Solomon, I believe it's 9.6. I yeah. see. Okay. Yeah, I will look at the paper. Okay, thanks. thanks. The other question I had was, what's the intuition on how important the fast recovery code is for a hot read file? I mean, do you actually spend do you have any trace data that shows that you're actually reading hot files in degraded mode often? Not because of disk recovery, but just for, well, background maintenance, I guess. Because if you've got too much cold data, what's going to dominate is just the recovery of the cold data. Um, uh, in, our, in the workload access queue we have here, most of the cold data is only having one uh, read. We, we think that uh, the, the file is created and read once and then stay there. So uh, still the majority of the access is like 90% of them, or at least 80% goes to hot files. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you.